Hello and welcome to the shop. I recently purchased an Atlas metal lathe because I would really like to start making some of my own pin components. Now the first component I wanted to learn how to make was a pin nib. So for about the last three days, I've been out in the shop making nib after nib after nib. I've been taking notes and this is the final nib that I came up with. Now I just finished turning this nib and I recorded the process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you over to the lathe and I'm gonna show you how I made this custom pin nib. I have a 38 millimeter long, half inch in diameter piece of aluminum chucked up in my collet chuck and I'm gonna start the process by facing off the end of the blank. I wanna find the center of the blank so that I can drill straight through. So I'm gonna use this starter bit and put a dimple on the end of my blank. With the center of the blank now marked, we're gonna use a 15 64 inch drill bit and we're gonna drill 16 millimeters into the blank. The hole that we just drilled in the blank is a little larger than the diameter of a Parker refill and will allow us to accept the Parker refill up to this shoulder. Now we need to drill a second hole, just a little larger than the diameter of this end nib of our Parker refill, the rest of the way through the blank. I've found that it's easier to flip the blank over and drill from the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and flip the blank over. We're gonna part off this end and we're gonna drill our 7 64 inch hole through the blank. We'll start by parting off the end of the blank so it's nice and square. We wanna make sure we find dead center on our blank. I've gone ahead and chucked up another starter bit, a little smaller than the last one we used, and we're gonna go ahead and find center and get a hole started on this end of the blank. I've chucked up a 7 64 inch bit and we're going to go ahead and drill through this blank until we enter the hole made by the 15 64 inch bit. I've removed the blank from the collet chuck and you'll notice this little red area right here. There's a scratch mark right there. That scratch mark is exactly 20 millimeters from this end of the blank. This is the end with the small hole. This is going to be the nib end of the blank. From the scratch mark to this end of the blank is exactly 17.5 millimeters. That's the end with the larger hole. This is gonna be the end with the threads. So we wanna turn this blank around, put the small hole back into the collet chuck and we're going to go ahead and turn down this end of the blank to a di we're going to create a tenon with a diameter of 0.375 inches or 9.54 millimeters. We're at 10.29, so we have a little more to take off. I'm at 9.54, 9.55 millimeters. We were shooting for 9.50, so this is perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little relief right behind the shoulder of my nib. And the reason I wanna do that is if you run threads all the way up to the shoulder, when I insert this nib into the body of a pen, it is going to cinch up so tightly that it's gonna be difficult to remove when I need to change the ink. I'm 
gonna go ahead and cut a little chamfer on this end of the blank. And the reasons for doing that are, first off, I wanna remove this sharp edge. Second, it'll make it much easier to start the die when I thread this. And finally, it'll make it much easier to start this nib into the body of a pin. I'm ready to add threads to the shoulder of my blank, and I've got a 3 8 NF24 die chucked up in my tap and die holder. If you take a look at this die, you can see that it is somewhat cone-shaped. That allows the material to enter, and the back threads are what actually make the proper depth cut for your threads. So what I'm going to do is flip this around in my tool and die holder, and I'm going to go ahead and run it back up onto the threads in reverse to make sure my threads are cut to the proper depth all the way to the end of the blank. And you can see that we now have some very nice, well-defined threads on the end of our blank. I've made a simple mandrel by drilling a 3 8 inch hole down the center of a half inch aluminum rod and tapping it with a 3 8 24 tap. This will allow us to thread our nib into the mandrel and turn the proper taper. Now before we do, turning will jam this into the mandrel super tight. So I've taken a piece of acrylic I've drilled a 3 8 inch hole down the center of that piece of acrylic, and we're gonna cut off about a 1 8 inch section that will sandwich between the nib and the mandrel to help stop it from getting so tightly screwed together while we're turning. I'm ready to start the process of tapering the nib. My collar just broke, so what I'm gonna do is stop. I'm gonna make another collar, and then we'll come back and finish our taper cut. I decided to go ahead and continue turning without the spacer. Uh, that will allow this to lock tightly into the mandrel. However, we can get it loose, and I'll show you what I do uh, when that happens. This nib is purposely longer than it needs to be for the ink refill. So what we're gonna do at this point is remove it from the mandrel, we'll get a good measurement, we'll take off the section that we don't need at the end of the nib, and then we'll finish tapering the nib to its final shape. When the nib gets tight against the mandrel, remember we put that relief in there? That's gonna help a little bit, but one of the things I do, I can't really do it with my fingers because there's oil on them from the turning process. I like to get a neoprene glove 
and then I can use that to get a grip on the nib and it lets me remove it from the mandrel. I've grabbed my ink refill and we're going to take a quick measurement. I'll insert it into the nib and you can see that we need to take a little bit off the end so that it sticks through the proper amount. It looks like about an eighth of an inch. So let's get it back on the mandrel. We'll part off the end of the nib and then we'll do our final tapering to give the nib its finished shape. I've made a little red mark on the end of the blank to denote how much I want to remove. And we're just going to take off a little bit at a time until that red mark disappears. I'm ready for the final cleanup on the nib. And what I want to do is watch this end closely. Uh, I want to have a nice thin wall around the ink refill. Uh, so we're just going to continually watch this end and slowly move the tool in and remove just a tiny bit each pass. There's a couple passes left, and with those last couple of passes, I'm going to stop short to produce a nice little design element at the top of the nib. All that's left is some sanding. I'm gonna run through the normal grits that I use while pin turning. We'll go with 120, 240, 320, 400, 600, and then I'll hit this with some four out steel wool. Uh, I'm not gonna make you watch that because we all know sanding is not that interesting. I'll be back in a minute to show you the finished nib. And there you have our finished nib. I really hope you enjoyed the video today. I had a great time designing and learning how to build my first custom pin component. I would like to mention that the tools that I use today are very common. For example, the tap and die were a 3 8 24. They came out of a standard set that I bought at a local hardware store. The drill bits came out of a standard set that I also purchased at a local hardware store. So I didn't use any, I tried to make this attainable so you wouldn't have to go out and spend a bunch of money on fancy taps and dies. You'll be able to use it with things that you may already have in your shop. Now, if you, this is aluminum, aluminum with some finesse can be turned on a wood lathe. It's a little tough. But if you were to go, say, take an acrylic blank, you would not even have to have the collet chuck that I use. You could use a Nova or a Barracuda, any standard chuck you have to hold the blank, to turn it, to thread it. Um, in regard to the tap and die holder that I used, you don't need that. The first couple that I made, I actually uh, used the die with a handheld die holder and I tapped them by hand just to prove that it could be done. And acrylic, aluminum was a little tough to do. Um, that's why I switched back to the tap and die holder. I hoped to show it by hand, but it was a little tough to do. However, acrylic will tap and thread very easily by hand. So I think you could build the same nib 
out of acrylic on your lathe with components and tools that you probably already have around your shop. And in the future, my plan is to come back, once I design and build this, is to come back and make this in acrylic on my wood lathe. So stay tuned for that video. I'd really like to thank you for hanging out with me today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.